You are now chopping it up with the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. Thank you. Welcome to a brand new episode of the Nerd Barbershop Podcast. I'm Terrence Williams. Thank you so much for clearing this episode and hanging out with me for a little bit. So this episode, I wasn't sure how I wanted to approach it. I know if I wanted to review the Marvel, do a retrospective of the Marvel's movie, or just kind of talk about it. And I think I'm going to do the latter and just kind of talk about it for a little bit. Um, So, the Marvel's was the latest uh, MCU movie, and actually it's the last movie, or it's the last MCU movie of the year. Uh, what if Season 2 will be the last MCU project of 2023? And so, I enjoyed the Marvel's. The Marvel's has been out for almost three weeks now. And I really enjoyed it. I went to go see it actually Thursday. Um, an early showing at the movie theater not too far from my house. And I really enjoyed it. The movie's runtime is an hour and 45 minutes. Which I think was perfect. Like it was just a perfect runtime. And the movie just kind of goes. Like a lot of people. It's been a lot of like bad reviews and bad flack. And I'm trying to figure out why. Like what were people mad at? What were people trying to figure out? Like you know what, what were you complaining about? Like it did what it's supposed to do wasn't too long it kind of you know it had these bits of one one of my favorite parts about the marvels was it didn't like overload you with information it stayed relatively contained a self-contained within kind of the movie where you had you basically you know carol danvers who had uh, her history goes from uh, the captain marvel movie uh kamala khan miss marvel of course her backstory is in uh the miss marvel disney plus show and then uh monica rambeau her backstory is in WandaVision on Disney Plus as well. And it gives kind of a nice job of giving you like these little sprinkles of all their backstories and what happened in those ret- in the in those uh projects like retrospectively. Like you get a little bit of what happened in uh Captain Marvel movie, a little bit of what happened with, in Miss Marvel, a little bit of what happened in WandaVision. But they don't go too far and don't really overwhelm excuse me, overwhelm the um the viewer. Basically they, they kinda of give you like these little winks and these little nudges of like Kamala talks about how her bangle when she used her bangle, she went back in time. It was a nice little wink and a little nudge, like, oh, hey, if you want to learn more about what happened, you should watch Ms. Marvel. Which I think it'd be cool if they had a little editor's block, like in comics, where a lot of times in comics, they would have, like, a character would say something, or just reference something in another issue, and, like, they'll have, like, a little writer editor's block in, like, the bottom right, and it says, oh, read Fantastic Four, whatever, read this comic to get the reference to what they're talking about in this comic. So it'd be cool if they had that, like, oh, hey, if you want to know more, watch Ms. Marvel. And like you know, because Monica Rambeau goes kind of like, oh yeah, and I got my power by walking through a Wex's he- uh, Wex's hex, and in, in, in uh, New Jersey, in uh, Westview. So again, if you don't know, watch Wandavision, and you will understand how that happened. What well, I thought was really nice, they didn't like really over flood, you know, with you with information. Like I think the uh, the movie just kind of starts, it kind of goes, it kind of hits. Like it just it doesn't like it doesn't lull for too long. You kind of get everyone's purpose everyone's ideas like a lot of people say oh like darbin's not a great villain and she's not <laughs> like another uh, disrespect to um to uh what's the name zowie i think it's her name uh, no disrespect to her but darbin wasn't really a good villain as a whole but she wasn't designed to be a really like this impactful villain with all these quotables and this mission that you really got behind she was really a good bridge villain for uh carol danvers and kamala khan because she kind of is the, uh, she was kind of like the connecting point between those two characters, you know. Because of what Carol did in the Captain Marvel movie, you know, kind of destroying the supreme intelligence for uh, the Creed. That affected her that way. And then Dara Ben was looking for the other bangle, which of course Kamala got her bangle from her great-grandmother. So it's like really cool just how like Dara Ben had the hatred from the Captain Marvel movie because what, uh, for what uh, Captain Marvel did and then also she had the bangle she needed the other one well Kamala happens to have the other bangle that she needs so it's kind of this nice junction point between the two characters she was a really good bridge villain that's why I said that she did her job and also one of the things I liked about Dark Ben which a lot of people are talking about she actually accomplished her mission you know and um spoiler alerts you know I even say spoiler alerts earlier but you know spoiler alerts for the Marvel I put that in the title of this podcast but you know spoiler alert but she actually accomplished her goal she did the thing that she said she was going to do she wanted to bring back kind of resources to holla she wanted to bring holla fresh air she did that she wanted to bring holla water she did that and she wanted to rejuvenate holla's son which she didn't actually do captain marvel does that in the end of the movie but she does that as well so she actually accomplished her goals like you know which you can't say for a lot of marvel villains a lot of times they kind of do stuff but not really but she actually hit her goals and did her mission so i think that gives her 
a big leg up, a big leg up in my eyes. Like, yeah, she wasn't really quotable. No one will remember her. Or, like, oh yeah, she wasn't like the big bad, but she wasn't. She didn't really have to be. You know, she was just kind of a good way to gel these characters together. I like the idea of their, their, uh, their kind of their, uh, their cosmic powers, their light powers, or their light based powers, kind of entangling. Where you had like this body switching, or, like the position switching, which is really much like a video game. It was very much like playing Marvel vs. Capcom three and hitting your assist and like you know, or tagging out and tagging in, or very much like Power Rangers Battle for the Grid, where you could do like the active tag, which is also in. Uh, Marvel's Capcom Infinite. I'm sorry, I'm just throwing out random video games now. But it's like a tag mechanic and a fighting game. That's how much, that's really what it felt like. Where, you know, you press the button and then your partner comes in. Like, I feel like that that's what the that was even inspired by. I'm curious to see if the directors actually talk about that. Because I feel like that's what it was inspired by. It was like a video game. And then, bringing it out and getting used to it. A Kamala family, was they were amazing. Her mom was great in it. Like, I think they did a good job of filling them in i thought they were gonna have a smaller piece but they were a really big part of like the heart section because again the movie's also kind of about family because you have kamala's family and you have carol and monica like their family how they haven't really talked and just bonding it all together and even carol kind of getting used to having the team again or being around people again because she's been in space by herself for a long time so it was really good there were some really heartfelt moments the action was great like uh iman valani is amazing you could tell like she's kind of the next Tony, she's kind of the next Robert Downey Jr. In my opinion, like, she's really that person that I think is going to really carry the torch for the next 10 years, I guess, for Marvel. Because she just has it. Her being a Marvel fan, her just loving the character. She actually dressed up as Kamala Khan or, Ms., you know, Kamala Khan's Miss Marvel years ago for Halloween. And now she is the official Miss Marvel for the MCU. It's just dope. I love seeing that. I think those are really cool stories. And she just has that energy. Like, she just has that person and. Miss Marvel is so good. Like I was personally a little bit disheartened when they changed her powers. Like I talked about this in Miss in my Miss Marvel review because I actually did a podcast with the Miss Marvel uh, Disney Plus show. You you can uh, watch that. You can listen to that podcast right here on the Nerd Barbers podcast. I have an episode. I'm not sure what number it is. It's back a couple of like, maybe like ten or fifteen episodes. Go back a little bit. You can listen to that podcast. And I talk about that. This is her powers, but. Because, uh, was it, uh, G. Willow Wilson, I think, is the person that created the Miss Marvel character, or the Kamala Khan Miss Marvel character, and she actually was part of the, like, the process of making the Miss Marvel Disney Plus show, so she kind of gave her her stamp of approval, which, which worked, and I think her hard light powers work a lot more in the MCU, give her a nice power buff, it gives her a way to be a uh, like you know where Kamala is on screen a lot easier it gives like mobility and traversal and stuff like that stuff she didn't have and she can still kind of do her and big and stuff too with the hard light which is kind of cool I kind of appreciate it it's like an expansion of her and big but it's just not it's just that it's like another piece to it so I love that you know uh Kamala Khan gets to do like the Nick Fury bit of initiating like Kate Bishop into like the Avengers which like they're gonna do like the Young Avengers initiative which you can see a lot of people, oh, here they go, they're doing this, and blah, blah. It's just like, yo, don't, you don't have to watch it. Like, if you don't like it, don't watch it. Like, if it's not interesting, you don't watch it. But don't just sit on the internet and complain. Like, why would you put energy into stuff you don't like? That's dumb. Like, if you don't like it, you don't have to like it. I remember I saw this guy's on, this group on, these two guys, and they have a podcast on Twitter. It's like, oh, I went to it. Oh, I hated it. It was the worst Marvel movie. It's not. It's one of the best Marvel movies in Phase 4 and Phase 5. Easily one of the best ones. And it's one of the best paced Marvel movies in the MCU. Bar none. It just goes. It's one of, like, in terms of, like, pacing and just the movie starts, you have fun, you enjoy it, it ends, it's good. It also probably has the best mid credit scene in the MCU right now. So, also really good. And again, spoiler, uh, spoiler alert again. Again, I'm going to post this everywhere. But you probably have seen it by now with um, Monica Rambeau. She used her powers to close uh, the jump point at the end of the movie. And she's stuck on the other side, which is another, it's another, um, Earth, like another, it's like another Earth, another multiverse. She ends up getting trapped on the other side. She wakes up in a lab, uh, Kelsey Grammer's beast is talking to her, like, trying to figure out what's happening, what's going on. She sees some, she sees her mom, Maria Rambo, but she, Maria, like, who is this person, what's wrong with her, and all this stuff. And come to find out that her mom, in this universe, is binary from the comics who was just kind of like this alternate version of not alternate version but it was like captain marvel but the binary power split or something i forget binaries like comic backstory but she's this character and also really cool deal that people realized was in this on this earth 
Maria Rambo. Not only is she binary, she actually has two bangles. She actually is wearing the two bangles, so she she can you know open these portals, control, and do some stuff we don't know yet. But the X Men exist in this planet, and also Professor X, and they're in the X. They're in the uh, the X Mansion, which is really cool. So we're trying to figure out like which world this is maybe this is like the fox x-men timeline and we have like this version of beast because he was very more comic or not comic but uh animated show beast where the just like the pants like the elastic pants the white chef coat or the white chef coat the white lab coat you know and he kind of looked more very more like animated beast from the cartoon <clears throat> the cartoon show excuse me so it's really cool i'm really curious like what they're gonna do with that and yeah i really thought the marvel was fun i don't know why people are complaining i just people just want to complain if you have like comic book burnout and superhero burnout that's fine i think that's cool that's probably fine i was thinking like man it's a lot of stuff but uh for as a fan someone who really loves it i really enjoyed it it was fun and some people were complaining about like the uh the musical planet where you have to sing and everybody's like oh you have to sing it's like how is like we have a talking raccoon we were jumping planets, multiverse, time travel. Loki did a whole bunch of shit in his show. And we're complaining about a planet where they have to sing. We're singing this, the, the native language. Like, come on. That's stupid. Like, y'all complain about that. Like, why? And it was only in the movie for, like, five, ten minutes. Like, a very small part of the movie was them singing. It was really only, um, Brie Larson, uh, yeah, Brie Larson only sang and the other guy who played the prince. There's only two people that, there's some of the people, like, and some of the other, like, People that live on this planet, but other than that, like people weren't singing. Like it was only like five, ten minutes. wasn't long. It was fun. But I was thinking, like after I saw her, like when she saw Captain Marvel, when she gets there, she puts on, she gets this dress that's designed like her Captain Marvel suit. Um, so we're gonna get, we're gonna see like Captain Marvel princess cosplay probably in the next year, all throughout the year. But it was really cool. But it was just fun. It was different. I enjoyed it. I didn't think it was too long. I thought it was perfect. I think it would have been any longer. It could have dragged. But I thought it was really good. I thought the Marvel was really good. Definitely check it out. Some people go, oh, I'm not going to see it. Wait for it to get to Disney Plus. Cool. Wait for it to get to, get to Disney Plus. Watch it and enjoy it. And just give them a shout. It's, you know, Marvel's movie you know, with, a, with three women leads. Which I think it's really, really cool. And they did a really good job. You know, Tiana Paris, Brie Larson, Iman Vellani. They did a great job. I love Sam Jackson being in it. And just Sam Jackson being Sam Jackson. There's a part where he tells... Uh, Monica to use her black girl magic to fly, which is hilarious. People go, oh, it's, it's, it's woke. It's, it's. I'm like, dog, this is. Shut up. Like, man, like, again, it's a comic book movie. Have you read the comics? People say random stuff all the time in comics. <laughs> like, it's just stuff that comes out. But I enjoyed it. If you're a fan of the MCU, definitely go see it. I think it's one of the better movies that they've done in a while. I think it's, again, just pacing and just, it just kind of goes. It's over really quickly. And um, just enjoy it. It's a fun movie. It's fun. It's a good. Hour and forty five minutes, it's not too long. It's just it's a good time. I think they do a good job. There's like there are some some weird stuff, like there are some edits and some weird cuts and some things you're like, wait, what? But other than that, like I just thought it was the, I thought it was a good thought it was a good time, you know. This is my perspective, you know. And I definitely really enjoy it. I am really excited of what if season two. I probably will be doing a review video for that probably when that comes out. But uh I am but I also do want to try to do a podcast a week. So this podcast will be coming out. I do have an idea for what my next podcast is going to be so stay tuned for that um always and forever thank you so much for supporting the podcast supporting the youtube channel and all the stuff that i've done in the last few years just celebrate my year youtube anniversary so thank you so much for the bottom of my heart and again always and forever slice and dice and gaming not just a motto it's a lifestyle i'll see you in the next video later